Hi, I'm Mo, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use uh, Unreal uh, Visual Data Prep asset file and bring your um, geom bring your geometries uh, unknown, uh, relatively unknown asset files into Unreal. Uh, for example, um, people usually in industry, in enterprise, as an enterprise uh, usage, they are not going to use it to import FBX files into Unreal, uh, but um, they are going to use uh, more, uh, a little more advanced uh, format, for example, Rhino or the VRED uh, files into Unreal. Why, they're, uh, why they need to import these files into Unreal? Because um, in industry, especially in automotive industry, um, there are many files and you are, there are many applications as well. So in game industry as well, there are many applications, there are many um, third party applications that they are providing content for game engines, for example, ZBrush, for example, Substance. But uh, in automotive industry, in design part, there are also many applications that are designing this geometry with. For example, Rhino, they are, uh, they, they are designing many parts of the car with Rhino. And uh, or they are um, visualizing many um, many parts, many car, car parts, or many uh, specific parts of the engines in uh, VRED. So um, they need to. They are. They have a prepared scene in VRED, and they want to import it into Unreal. So Unreal. Uh, uh, so they need a kind of a pipeline uh, in order to prepare their data. But there is already there is already a plugin that you can use and bring these data into Unreal, which is called DataSmith here. So uh, if, uh, with this DataSmith, you can exactly bring your VRED scene or Rhino file into Unreal, no problem. But it does not offer what Visual Data Probe Asset File offers. Uh, Visual Data Probe Asset Files exactly uses this DataSmith file, DataSmith plugin in the background to import them into Unreal, but it has a pre-stage. Just consider it a kind of like a RAM or something for a computer. It has a pre-stage. It lets you see your model, see the hierarchy, see the materials, and adjust them, change them, delete them, or change the hierarchy or group the hierarchy together, merge them, uh, and do any other kind of stuff that you can do in Unreal with static meshes, with materials, with actors. Uh, in, in, in this stage, in this temporary stage, when you're done, when you know that you're going to get a good result, you're going to say, okay, I'm done with this temporary stage, just import it into Unreal. And you're going to import it into Unreal. You have the files exactly as if you you have uh, you have done that through DataSmith, but with modifications. One more thing remained: when you are importing with DataSmith, there is if, if first of all you cannot do any modification, of course. If but if you are doing the modification with this Visual Data Probe asset file, you also can save the recipe. You can say, okay, each time that I'm receiving this wheel, for example, from a specific car manufacturer, I do not need exactly three parts of it. And I would like to delete them. And I would like to automate them. So how would you do that? You easily can just create a recipe and just keep your recipe. And if you want to even share your recipe, it, it, it is even shareable. It is not a project base. You can very easily share your recipe between projects. Send it to your friends send it to your colleagues and they can use your recipe as well so they can uh, they can be on the same page with you so it is kind of powerful and it is uh, the equivalent of pixies from unity side so uh, whatever you can do with unity you can also do with a visual data probe asset file um, i think the most important targets for this video is people who are working in industry in enterprise industry in enterprise in automotive industry that they know that how many how many times they wanted to do these modifications do these modifications into into asset files uh, before bringing them into unreal and that was a hassle but this um, hassle is uh, is kind of addressed by unreal team right by epic teams and uh, we can use these asset files to, uh, to uh, prepare our data. Now in this video, I'm going to briefly show how can you use this asset file and uh, make your life way easier. So first of all, I'm going to create a folder to just keep everything neat. So I'm going to say that data prep, or I can say the data prep, yeah, data prep. And then in the data prep, I would like to create another folder and I would like to keep my geometry. So I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to just say sample view. 
sample view. This is my the, in the name of the geometry that I have prepared uh, in Rhino. So it's a Rhino file. Um, I'm going to create an asset file first, data prep, and data prep, data prep asset file. So I'm going to create it and then name it um, data prep main. Also, it's very important that I come to settings, plugins, and I mentioned data prep. This data prep editor should be enabled. Because I'm using the uh, because I'm using the automotive um, template, this is already enabled by default. If you need a specific importer from the um, uh, from the data smith, you need to also uh, enable it in here. For example, if you need an RxF importer, you can enable it here. And any uh, there, there are many importers that you can enable. So now I'm going to double click on it. So I ha I'm seeing a window, it, exactly, it's kind of like other windows in um, Unreal, nothing special about it. So first of all, I'm going to start by importing my model into the data prep, into this temporary estate. This is my temporary estate. So I'm going to go to the input and I'm going to say, uh, click on this plus icon and I'm going to say that file. I do not have a folder, I have a file. So I'm going to have a file and I'm going to just say, go to my desktop and then car parts. And I have this sample view that, uh, that I have prepared. This is a Rhino file. The 3DM is a Rhino format. So, and also you can import many files as you can see here. So I, I think uh, one of them is um, VRED. You can also import VRED scenes uh, through, uh, through a data smith. Cinema 4D, for example, you can also import. Catio, all the Catio parts you can import. And um, yeah. So I'm going to say open. Uh, it does it does, not, it does not open. It just referenced the link to the file. So if I say import, it's going to read this file if, uh, from this link and it's going to import it into temporary stage. So folder, what is this folder is the output. So I need to say that where I want to store it after I said that commit. So I'm going to say that, okay, I have a folder, data prep, sample will. Yes, I'm going to say, okay, I would like to save it in this folder. So level name, what does level mean? Uh, what does that mean? It means that I have levels, I'm going to go to Windows and I'm going to say that um, layers, uh, levels, sorry. And then I have a persistent level. This is the main level. I'm going to add it as a sub level to my persistent level. I'm going to, I'm going to close this one for now. And I'm going to go here. Okay, now I have parameterizations. What does it mean? If I'm going to use any of these modules to do the modifications on my assets, on my uh, on my assets, um, I'm going to if I want to make an instance of this data prep file for later times, exactly like material instance. I'm going to and if I expose any of these as a parameter, okay, like it comes to here, and I'm going to see it. And I'm going to show you la at later times how I'm using this one. So uh, first of all, I'm going to say import. So I'm going to see something. It, my model is not very big. It's, very, it's just a wheel. So it's not going to take, uh, take a long time. Yeah. Uh, it also comes with material, but uh, the shader is compiling right now. So it's just a simple wheel of a car. OK. Um, yeah. Now it comes with material. So I have two windows. I have two panels. Uh, one of them is the assets that I have. For example, I have these uh, meshes that I'm going to, if I say commit, I'm going to have them in my uh, content browser. And this is, this is the material master, and these are the material instances. And I have the hierarchy, when I'm just saying commit, this is going to uh, get added to my hierarchy as a part of this level, as a part of this sub level. So I'm going to see this, uh, some, I have some actors, I have some static meshes. So now uh, let's get it started. Um, first of all, um, for example, as a sample scenario, I would like to, I'm, I'm going to, exp I'm going to ex inspect my model, what I have, what I have received from the artist. So I'm going to receive a will and I'm going to also receive this kind of cubes in the middle of this, in the middle of the screen. I, I do not need them. Uh, I, 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 actually they are because uh, of, um, to indicate the middle of the part, middle of the car for me, but I do not need them. So I'm going to delete them. But each time that I'm receiving this wheel, I'm going to have them again. So I need to delete them again. So I, I need to automate it. That's a use case to automate it. For, so is there, I'm going to uh, identify them, just kind the measure points. If I just use this visibility, I'm not going to see them. So that means it's correct. I need to get measure points. And let's say all of its children. Yes. And let's see. Yes, all of its children and delete them. So let's see how we can do it. So you have some categories in here. 
in this panel, you can select by, which means all of the things first, you need to select them. So if you're going to use this category and then operations, for example, if we need to delete them, the operation of the delete is in categories in under this operations tab. And the transform, if you like to extend your selections by, uh, for example, getting children, you're going to use transform. So first of all, I'm going to use um, actor label. So I'm going to drag it and drop it into, into, the, into, the, into the graph. It, this graph is kind of like a um, blueprint graph. However, there is a change with it. There is something different with it. Uh, if I use another uh, node, you are seeing that I'm going to add another one. If I just add another one, again, that's the third one. So the, it's going to read all this from the left to the right side. So uh, it's going to, at first, it's going to execute this one, then this one, then this one, okay? And also, if I just add something after this node, first it's going to execute this node, comes to here, then comes to here, then comes to here. Another thing, if I select something, for example, from here, okay, I'm not going to pass my selection to here unless I do some operations. For example, I'm going to do deletions in here. I'm not going to have those deleted objects accessible to this node. But if I'm not going to do any type of operation, for example, I'm going to change the mobility of some static meshes, I'm going to access a a still these those static meshes in here. Whatever I'm selecting in here does not is, is not going to pass around to the next block. So I'm going to access if I'm not selecting anything by using these selected, but selected so select by nodes. I'm going to I'm going to talk to all available nodes. For example, I'm going to say uh, filter by value. I'm not going to use any filters. I'm going to use operate. Um, for example, set mesh. Okay, I'm going to just grab a set mesh. I'm going. Uh, this one is going to go through all the hierarchy. The actor doesn't have any mesh. It cannot have a mesh. Only a static mesh actor can have a mesh. So it only is going to affect the static mesh uh, asset files, not not the actors. So that's how it's going to treat itself. So let's just say I'm going to just come to the new actions and I'm going to select them by uh, actor label. It's going to be contains uh, a contains match wildcard or exact match. I'm going to say that uh, exact match. So I'm going to say a measure uh, points. Am I uh, am I successful in that? Uh, could I select it? I do not know, but there is a feedback. So I'm going to just say right click and preview filter, and I'm going to see that there's a checkbox in here, yellow checkbox. So that means I could successfully select it. So measure points, it is selected. So now it's exact match, but the problem is I do not, I, I, I already wants to just, not just delete itself, but also delete all of its children. Then I need to extend this filtering by transform, which means that I'm going to select hierarchy and I'm going to bring it down. Yes, exactly. And immediate children, immediate children, which means this one or this one or this one. But I, do, I want all descendants. So I'm going to change it to all descendants. And then output can include, there is something, if I can show you, I uh, can include input, which means that should it include the measure points itself, I'm going to say yes. And then, okay, what would you like? Can I can I have a, a feedback? No, it, it, there is no feedback. For transform, there is no feedback. The only feedback you're going to get, you're going to get it for filtering. So, now I'm going to delete it. Now I'm going to delete object. Okay, now it's going to delete object. Doesn't There is no option for delete object. So, I'm going to say that, uh, should execute. Execute is going to execute this one. Yeah, I'm ready for that. I'm going to execute and let's see what I do not have it. I'm going to have just builds. And if I just say zoom back, I'm going to just get my uh, get back my build uh, my my build exactly as it should be. So, uh, which means I could delete it. Still, I'm in my temporary window. I can if I if I say commit, I'm going to get out of this window and I'm going to make this window empty. So let's just say now my uh, my data is prepared and I'm ready to commit it. So I'm going to commit it to my to my defaulter that I've just already defined in here, and I'm going to create this sub level in here. Uh, yeah, um, uh, my uh, my um, windows, my panels are empty, but still I have recipes. That means I can, I can even copy it or paste it or uh, paste it as a as a, as a HTML file, uh, as a HTML um, markup language and pass it around. Or I can even save this asset file, save this asset file and pass the asset file to my teammates to just use the same recipe that I have used. 
So I'm going to get back to the project and I have sample view that I've created. Mm, content, data prep, yes, and then sample view, yes. And there's a data smith asset file, why? Because data smith, because this um, data prep visual asset file using data smith in the background. That is why, and that is why I have an asset file in here. So uh, this, is, this is my map, this is my map level. And then if I come to window and if I come to levels, I'm also seeing that as a sub level to my uh, main level. So I'm going to click on that to see my geometry, materials, yes, all of my materials, my master materials, material instances, and then do we have my geometries, my geometries, yes, and also are they added to my level, yes, they're added to my levels, I'm seeing it, and I'm seeing my, um, my uh, wheel in the middle of the screen, and also, I can also show you that it is a part of the sub-level, so if I just come to levels, and if I just say visibility of the levels, I'm not going to have it. Uh, I'm not going to have it anymore. So this is part of the sub-level. So, um, now that I have it, and I've just prepared it, I'm happy with it, and uh, there is no problem with it. Yeah, I'm happy, I could do that, I have a recipe, and I'm ready also to share my recipe. But the thing that I showed you is a very, very simple stuff to do. There are millions of other things you can do with these modules and let's uh, dive through them and let's see what kind of possibility you can get uh, with these kind of modules that Unreal um, made for us and also if we can extend them. I'm going to show that in the next video.